Hello, hi everyone. Welcome. Look, that, there's the ocean today. There's a cloud covering it, if you see. And um, today we're gonna go over um, the book by Jean-Pierre de Cassade, Ab Abandonment to Divine Providence, a Surrender, Absolute Surrender to Divine Providence, which actually, I was just memorizing a verse and I forgot where it's from, but it was saying, um, I will love thee, O, o Lord, the, the word Yahweh, the I am that I am. It's this, it's in the Psalms, right? But um, I was just memorizing it, but I didn't memorize the reference. And it was like, for you have heard my petitions, right? And it's so cool because the I am that I am is Yahweh. That is the absolute infinite beingness creator before here look at way before all um created things that god is behind that and so god god is above all our problems so it's so wonderful because you know we have psalm 23 the lord is my shepherd therefore i lack nothing and another word for shepherd is i heard best friend it's like a word play when the hebrew and so it's like, if God is your best friend, you're never going to be like absolutely homeless, you know, unless there's a reason for it, for, for a season so that you can learn not to depend on outer riches because they'll let you down one way or another. <laughs> going to get you, get you, get you, get you. Um, all right. And so welcome. We're on, um, this might be the last, I don't know. But I know that we finished the book, but we're reading his letters. So he wrote letters. He was a spiritual director to nuns in the 1700s, I believe. Maybe earlier. I, I Sometimes I can't remember, but it's in the description. And so um, he has such wise sayings because he studied St. John of the Cross, who was in the 1500s. And... Um, I sometimes get the dates wrong because it's in a different part of our brain, you know, the the logical part and the um, imaginative part. And they call the court they communicate with each other. But anyway, so um, uh, so he read Saint John of the Cross, uh, the ascent of Mount Carmel, and I'm sure Teresa of Avila, um, the interior castle maybe. But I know anyway. He 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 was a spiritual director and a Jesuit. Um, and, and I, that doesn't mean corrupted. Like there are, there are, there are a lot of that order. I would believe that aren't corrupted, but the enemy always wants you to think that everything is corrupted and the things that are corrupted aren't, you know, he calls bad, good and good, bad. That's one of his characteristics. Cause he's a liar from the beginning. Okay. And so, um, I'm going to get her little bowl of water, but, um, we're going to start. Just a second, man. Let me let me pour you some. She's like putting her nose in it. Just a second. Just a second. Uh, she did really good coming up here. It was. It turned pretty hot. All right. Uh, I just. I don't recommend plastic, but uh, that's what I brought today. All right. Okay, so I do this sometimes so people that don't want to hear the beginning can fast forward to when we actually start reading this book. So we're, we're in the appendix. Now what I would do oftentimes, oh, okay, here are the letters, is I would listen to the letters. If I could not sleep, I would just listen to his letters and I would find so much comfort because I have an app um, called Voice Dream Reader that I don't get any money for, so I'm not I'm not trying to sponsor them, but just the Reader app, and it reads websites or PDFs, whatever. You can get all these classic books for free on, I think it's somethingarchive.org, and there's amazing books. Um, and then you just open them, and I have this voice, Brian, that just reads them all to me with a British accent. And so before, I used to have a lot of nightmares years ago. Um, and I didn't know, I didn't know if you have doors open, 
um, you know, even from being a pleaser to people, that's idolizing people, that's putting them above God because you're still trying to get your worth from them. Now, I'm a psychologist in my day job, so sometimes these spontaneous statements will come up because I'm used to just being in that kind of mode, but I try to stay with the book for this. Don't tip this over, little one. There you go, girl. Um, okay, so let's begin. And um, anyway, when I would have those nightmares, I would just wake up and I would put this on and it helped. It would help me bring, bring me back to my center, you know? Like Mary was birthed Christ. We're all meant to birth Christ in our own way. And she said, let it be unto me according to thy will. You know, once you remember, oh, all I, all I, it's really simple. All I, all I have to do is absolute surrender to divine providence. You know, the I am that I am, that's before all time that created everything. And um, then that's it. Everything comes back in order after that. I think he said, oh shoot. He said that, I just lost my, oh, here it is, okay. He said that before. Okay, so we're in um, a letter, a letter by um, Father Surin SJ, another Jesuit father. I don't know why they included this, but I'll just go with it because we're in the middle of his um, his letter to someone on, on a very easy means of acquiring peace of heart. So that's exactly what we were just talking about. Okay, and so um, he does first, um, let us be fully, I'll just read the first sentence of each of these. We're on the number four of this. Let us be fully convinced that we have but one thing to do to possess each moment, the fullness of our mind without permitting the reasonable will to uselessly recall the past or excite vain anxieties concerning the future. And so I talk about that a lot as a psychologist and I already mentioned it in the last video. It's like when we go back to our past, we get depressed. When we imagine things that could happen in the future that you don't know will happen, we get really anxious. Yesterday was, um, you know, big day for me. So I, um, I, I had to surrender like a million times and just keep going back into that peace because I don't, I don't want to be anxious. Jesus says, why be anxious? Do not be anxious. It doesn't add anything to your life. And so he's telling us divine truths. Jesus is. All right. Um, I want the ocean to be seen as soon as this, maybe this cloud layer will lift up. So I, even though I have a tripod, it's, it's wonky or something. I don't know. All right, so um, number two was uh, second, let's see. Second, we shall sanctify the present moment by renewing, there you go, girl. As frequently as we shall feel it needful, the act of recollection, which we must have made the first time with all the fervor of which we are capable. But this recollection should be very peaceful and dwell in the depths of the soul more than in the sensible part. I forgot I didn't bring my um, microphone today, so I got it. I usually keep this really close to me. So we'll just do it like that. The mic is right here. Got a mic in my hand to quote the Beastie Boys. <laughs> they sing their peaceful song is got a light note got a light note got a light note right now shine like the sun <laughs> anyway all right okay so um these are wonderful i love these All right, I'm, I'm repeating my phrase now. You get what you get and you don't throw a fit. <laughs> That's my whole motto for lots of my videos. Uh, okay. There's one where, there's one of these where I'm at the ocean and I put a little wave emoji when I'm there. So you can listen to those, you know, if it relaxes you to hear the ocean in the background at the same time. All right, so 
The third one is we can remain faithful to this recollection. Now, Jesus says, when you pray, go into your inner room and shut the door. So I got this ring when I was in Greece. I think, I don't know, maybe Turkey. To remind me, look, the three, there's three in one. And then to go in the inner door and shut the outer door and pray there. Um, so shut the door to your outer senses. And you can do that right now. God, we pray. We lift up every single person here. I pray first that this video goes to every single person you want it to go to in your divine timing, God. Help us all to trust that. Um, I pray encourage people to do, do their part and share this. If, if And I'm not trying to manipulate. God, I just pray that... Um, if you inspire people to do that by your Holy Spirit, that they do that. I pray that um, you help us calm ourselves down. You calm us, God. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Forgive us all our sins, whether we've done them knowingly or unknowingly. God, forgive us all. Help us to walk in your will. Thank you for this day. Thank you. Thank you, God. Um, I pray, speak through me. Speak through this book. Speak through the, the people writing these letters back then. You are above time. We pray protection over them, a hedge of protection. We cancel all the assignments of the enemy on everybody's life right here. We pray healing and love and um, restoration, God, and reconciliation with re in relationships where there's brokenness. I pray you heal those, God. We lift all of this up to you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we're prayed over, right? It's nice to cover people in prayer. I, I You know, it felt like a manipulation before, so sometimes I just wouldn't do that because... I just have had so many fake people, but I'm not, I'm not going to let the fake people, you know, take away prayer from us, right? But their, that, their fakeness is between them and God. All right. Um, okay, so we can remain faithful to this recollection only on condition that we frequently examine the interior and exterior condition of our soul. If you look up, maybe hashtag examine, E-X-A-M-E-N. I think I read the examine. I think I did on a one minute video maybe on my YouTube. So you can see there's a pattern for what we can do every night. And I do a different pattern than this, but this one's really good. And you just ask the Holy Spirit to direct you for 15 minutes. It's by um, St. Ignatius of Loyola created it. Now, he got a vision of Mary and came up with his way of devotion. And now, it's not for everybody, but um, the exercises of St. Ignatius, you've got to go through that with someone. To, to, anyway, but um, the exam is just this short, this little card. You can look it up online and, uh, and the images, maybe, um, of St. Ignatius of Loyola. And um, there's a little prayer that helps you go, you know, help Holy Spirit direct me and help me s reflect on the past day without judging myself there was a there was a woman a, a man a mystic christian orthodox man from cyprus who had a really good examine as well he did it a little bit different way he was inspired by saint john the beloved but um it was like what are the things that i've done today that i ought not to have done those types of things we say that in our evening prayer and uh, we've done these things, and, and we've not done the things that we ought to have done. We ought to have stopped and cared for someone, but we were so busy looking at our own problems and our own worries that we forgot about other people or whatever. You know, but do it all without judging yourself. You just do it where you like lay it bare before God. And, and I read somewhere recently, I think in my commentary from the 1100s, Blessed Theophylact. Yeah, it's in John 17, if you want to look, but... Um, he has a commentary on the Gospels, and it says once you surrender a thing up to God, then it becomes holy. It's it's made holy, and so you're just surrendering all this stuff. You're like, you know, all my faults. The Lord is my shepherd, and that means I'm a sheep in all these ways. I've been an idiot, and I'm not putting myself down. I'm just saying, idiotic, you know. And um, so heal me and give me your wisdom and take these from me there Jesus said all of those who are weary and heavy laden come unto me and I will give you rest all right for your weary soul I'll give you rest take my yoke upon you and he'll carry the yoke with us it's like two oxen anyway so okay so uh, we can remain faithful to this recollection only on condition that we frequently examine the interior and exterior condition of our soul as soon as we discover in her any irregularity, however small or in any degree displeasing to God, we ought proceed to restore order with a heart as tranquil as if we had never failed without disquieting ourselves 
with reflection springing from self-love, you know, oh, I did so good in all these other areas, right? <laughs> it's like, C.S. Lewis says, you don't go to the doctor and go, here, here's my good knee and here's my good foot. It's like, you just go with, you know, Jesus said that. I've not come to heal the, to the, those who are well or think that they're well. I've come to those who are humble and you say, hey, heal all of this. And here, and eventually C.S. Lewis says in mere Christianity, you, you just like, just take the whole lot and remake it. Go ahead, you know, the whole lot of me. That's how they say it in England and stuff, right? Um, without springing from self-love, vexation at the fault committed or from a pretext of livelier contrition, trying to make yourself feel worse, you know? I was saying that last time. If, if anything, I just pray, like, give me um, true repentance, God. I only can have true repentance even from you because I can't even see the depth of how I hurt someone. And I did, I did say that last time. And I just, I don't want to say anything um, thoughtless. I wasn't thoughtless about it, but, um, you know, I, I really think that, you know, when we go to heaven or wherever, and we see how we've actually harmed ourselves and other people, we'll just be so full of real grief that we didn't love where we ought to have loved and how badly we crushed that other person's spirit and soul. Now, of course, God, Jesus says, I'm the healer of the brokenhearted. So he can heal us and he does heal us. So go to him. And so um, there's there's consolation in that. But um, but um, what's sorry? I just but um. Anyway, so never, never be, never, never get hopeless because Jesus can redeem any situation, anyone, anyone. So you you can't carry the burden. Um. Once you've asked for forgiveness, just keep reading in Psalm fifty-one and ask God to clean your heart and take away your sins from you. All right. Um, these sentiments can only retard, slow down our progress in virtue. For while the soul amuses itself, this is where we were anyway. Um, <sighs> caressing its chagrin and probing its past faults, this useless introspection paralyzes its action and disposes it to new falls, a peaceful regret for time ill-employed United with an earnest endeavor to make better use of the present moment is the true character of love of God, right? Like, um, I begin again. There's a guy, maybe Bruno Lanteri. I heard about him from a guy named Timothy Gallagher, who's, who speaks a lot about discernment. If you want to know how to discern between evil and good, I've read a lot of his books and went to his um, a, a whole weekend conference and I didn't know it was going to be a silent conference. Those those were new to me at the time. That was a long, that was maybe six, six or seven years ago. Um, maybe eight. It might have been eight. No. Anyway, it, I think it was six or six years ago. Anyway. Um, but he says in, in Latin, and I forgot how you say it in Latin. I begin again. But suchupe is another Latin word for a prayer that I really love that St. Ignatius has, where it's like, I surrender all my memories to you, God, all my memories, all my understanding, all my liberties, all my free will, right? My entire will. Um, I give them all to you. You have given all to me. I give them all back to you. You see, see when you surrender it, 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 it God can make it holy. Um, only give me your love and your grace. Now that's my reenactment of that because I memorized it by the word mule because <laughs> there's a verse that says don't be like the horse or the mule that has to be led to the water with the bridle just go to God and so it's memories understanding liberties entire will it's it's rearranged a little bit differently but though that's the essence of it but give me your love and your grace always remember the you're you're asking for the love and grace because sometimes I'd forget that part I'm like wait a second I have to replace all that stuff with something good right all right, so number four, the quickest means of attaining peace of heart is love of our own objection and miseries, voluntary uh, offense against God, however accepted. I don't know how he, he's saying this, but 
The quickest means of attaining peace of heart is love of our own objection and miseries. Voluntary offense against God, however accepted. This love of one's personal objection at what is abjection? A-B-J-E-C-T-I-O-N. Like humility? Um, or just object horror? You're, you love your own, ho the horror of how, it's like C.S. Lewis, I was so comforted earlier on Monday this week, I was reading Mere Christianity, listening to it again on, on you know, with the reader person that reads it. And um, <sighs> Lewis was saying, C.S. Lewis was saying, there's one person that I've done this my whole life with, even though I hated their actions, absolutely hated their actions. Um, but still kept loving the person. He's like, that's myself. So if I can do that with me, I can do that with other people. And it's like, um, you know, I'm like, how does he do that with himself? Like that, that's taken me a long time to learn how to do that with myself. Um, but it's like hate the sin, totally be abhor abhorrent about the sin, but love the sinner. Just still know this is a soul that Jesus died for and is redeemable and he wants to forgive and reconcile him to a perfect God. So her, him or her, right? God, Jesus wants to do that. We're starting to see the ocean, I think. I think it's behind that cloud. That's, I don't think that's another cloud. I think that's, that dark part's the ocean. All right. So. Uh, this love of one's personal objection derives profit from everything, even from fall, falls, which should never discourage us. You know, because I always just say it's all fertilizer. It's all fertilizer for God. God can make use of every single bit of it. Where was I reading? Yesterday or the day before? I think yesterday. I was reading something and it says, for sure. And this guy, I think it was a guy that was writing, was really certain that God uses every, I think it would, might have been Archbishop Blessed Theophylact from the 1100s in Bulgaria. Um, he said, God uses every single bit of everything. He never puts, just like the Native, I'm part Native American, they would never put anything to waste. They knew every single thing, like every part of the animal, like the brain of the animal. There's enough brain juice to tan the hide of whatever animal that is. All right, so you use that. I know that's a little gross, but I took wilderness survival classes. And so it's like, um, so you can, if, if there's an animal that happens to be dead, <laughs> you know, um, or whatever you're living and surviving off of that, you can um, use the juice in the brain and it can tan the hide so you can make it into clothing or a teepee or whatever you need it for, a bag. and everything so no but so every part of the animal does not go to waste and so god takes all of our falls and like even let's say i say this as like a psychologist in my day job right i always say that because i'm like if you need a professional then go get one I'm, i can't be your yours online but i mean i have skills do travel is um So even if I had like um, an alcoholic parent or something and I always learned how to be super sensitive and just read the room and see like, you know, if I'll just say it's a father or something, if he's, you know, chaotic that day or not or whatever, um, all of those super spiritual skills you learned in being sensitive, once you become a Christian and you yield yourself to God, you can use all of those skills for God, you know, every skill that you've acquired, you know, um, I don't know if my phone got scratched or if there's a, oh, there's a balance or something in the middle of my, it tells me it's saying my, my phone is not centered. Okay. I never saw that before. It must be a new feature, but anyway, so you see like nothing, none of that, none of that goes to waste. It's horrible that that happened but you did develop a skill out of that and you can use it for the kingdom of God for the hashtag team Jesus, right? Instead of be used by the other team, you're just used 
you know, because people will go to addictions and numb themselves because they're so sensitive, you know. God will protect you in your sensitivities. Just go to God and ask him. Just ask him. He hears my petitions. I love you, Lord. Uh, capital L-O-R-D. That's the I am that I am. Because you hear my petitions. Um, if I didn't put that in the penned comments, just remind me uh, and I'll look it up for us. This love of what, okay, um, so pro derives profit for everything, even from falls, which, what ought, which ought never discourage us. I changed the shoulds to ought. You know, I've talked about it before. A soul, it's, it's already translated from the French, so I feel like I've got the liberty to do that. <laughs> a, a soul that loves her own objection, laughs at discouragement, and combats it with all her strength, content to be of herself, but impotence and misery she rejoices that jesus christ possesses the fullness of all perfection and that she cannot do without him an instant she she's she's often how they describe the soul i would i love it she would not were it in her power will to have any strength of herself for her radical impotence for all good and her unceasing need of Jesus Christ set forth his divine attributes to greater advantage. This is the soul contentment of a soul that seeks only the glory of God. This, this soul, S-O-L-E, contentment of a soul, S-O-U-L, that seeks only the glory of God. In this peaceful, humble way, we advance in purity of divine love and in the extermination of our bad habits more rapidly in a week than we would in a year of unquiet vigilance, you know, trying to like harm ourselves and, you know, just, you know, make it all up ourselves. It's okay, Laura. A very little experience of God's way will convince us of this, for self-love is the motive and end of those who yield to disquiet, who are like, Oh, I have to punish myself and punish myself. It's like, that's, that's not humility. That's us trying to prove our own worth by punishing ourselves. When Jesus says, I took your punishment upon myself. And that's us not, not humbly accepting that. You know, it's, it, I'm not saying it's easy. You have to ask God, help me do that. Um, while those who proceed with the calmness of which we now have spoken rely on Jesus Christ. All right, I have this part of my journal open. <laughs> okay, and so right now, because I'm f facing st stuff that could pull me into, hook me into anxieties, but I have it calm. I wrote it really big on this one journal. And C-A-L-M, Christ Almighty loves me. That's it, that keeps me calm. <laughs> like that's it. And you, you learn how to spend time with God and grow in this. It doesn't come by just, I don't know, just enter into quiet time with God every day with scripture and sit and meditate with him just like you would your best friend. If you spend an hour with your best friend every day, what kind of a relationship would you have with your spouse, right? With whomever, with your child, right? Now is the most evident that seeking only God's interest always gives strength and that egotism, even spiritual egotism, being a disorder is weakening. Wow, they talked about this in the 1500s. Okay, even spiritual egotism being a disorder is weakening. So it is. It's like, I'm so spiritual. And because I, you know, you know, um, do all these religious things to try to make myself feel better instead of rely on the Lord Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ. To, you know, I do this. This means I receive the blessing. I learned that. And so it's like, um, re rely on his blood. It covered, it covers everything. By his wounds, we are healed, period. I think that's in Isaiah 51, maybe, or Isaiah 50. It's Psalm 51 is, you clean my heart, O God, after David was did a horrible sin. Um, uh, where is the spiritual egotism? Okay. Fifth, the perfection of order is to be found in the complete fusion of our interest with those of God. Therefore, he who remains faithful to the sweet habit, 
this sweet habit, you know, that we're talking about this whole time, is not astonished to see himself assailed by every form of temptation, right? Because the devil will come at you. He tries to pull you back, that liar. He's, he's a liar from the beginning. Bye, devil, with your ugly self. You know, he's meant to be under our feet. You're meant to know your authority, Luke 10, 19. It's, Jesus says, I give you authority to step on the scorpions and the serpents and keep them under your feet. All right. And so you're, you're meant to stand up to this with, with God's help. Ask God to help you know your authority because he wants you to stay in lies and keep your shame and keep trying to battle it yourself. So anyway, it says, um, therefore, he who remains faithful to this sweet habit is not astonished to see himself assailed by every form of temptation, right? All of a sudden you're like, oh, I'm not going to be tempted by that anymore. And then all of these different temptations. <laughs> My gosh, let me tell you. The sweetest man was parked next to me when I was working on my book last week and I was just like and he was single and I'm single and it was but I, I didn't I mean he just seemed really like a sweet sweet man and um you know really present in nature and in this world I don't know you sometimes can just tell qualities from people but I was just like oh well you know, I'm going to, I'm going to focus on editing my book right now <laughs> for, for all of us. It's 12 ways to heal trauma. I'm almost finished. God help me pray in Jesus name. Amen. All right. So, um, that didn't have to, that didn't necessarily, it necessarily was a temptation because, um, but any, anyway, um, let's not get distracted. <laughs> okay. Is, um, he bears the weary burden of them. Um, he he bears the weary burden of them as the natural fruit of his misery, okay? Maintains in the depth of his heart a resigned acquiescence and courageously drags this weary chain of his past without permitting himself to be troubled or cast down by the memory of his iniquities, right? It's just like, wait, the blood of Christ covers that, period. You know, or um, I, I was in a faith practice a Christian faith practice for 20, 20 years where you could go to confession and then you physically remember. And there is a verse that says, confess your sins one to another and you shall be healed. It's like once I confess that to, to a trusted other person who keeps it confidential, you know, um, you know and you say, I, I confess this before all the saints. It's like, it's done. I already confess that. If the enemy tries to bring it up to you again, it's like, no, that's confessed before the Lord Jesus Christ, before God Almighty, before... And the Holy Spirit cleanses me and that's it. And so you shut it down. You shut it down. <laughs> shut it down. All right. And, and Jesus though, like not from your own strength. But anyway, when this thought assails him, he loses no time examining whence it came. You know, if you need to see the root of it, sometimes the root is bringing up some old insecurity that God wants to heal it at the root so that it doesn't keep coming up. So... Um, you know, you don't just bury everything that there's different, there's nuances of how to deal with this. Look, it's 3303 when I was saying that Jesus was 33 when he died. We claim that number back. We take it back. All the people lying and making up their own religions. They, some of them don't know they're being deceived, but, um, well, only that's the first commandment love the Lord your God your heart with all your heart soul mind and strength um, don't have any other gods before you it just wrecks everything but you know you God will help you find your path I'm glad you're here <laughs> all right so um, he loses no time examining whence it came nor how long it has lasted for such an examination would be in itself a new distraction oh okay so Maybe sometimes you don't do that. More voluntary and injurious than the first. Okay, sometimes if you ruminate it and keep trying to dig, and I know that in therapy, people want to keep looking at stuff and it's like, look, instead of looking at how many times you threw up your food and where you were and what you ate, let's just get to how to heal this. This You're wanting to control things in this way that's not working. It's just like anger is a uh, defense we use when we don't yet know a better one. You know, all of, all of our addictions are defenses we use when we don't know. We, we don't have to carry that shame, right? Anyway, um, so, um, so it's, he loses no time examining. So this person, now they're saying you don't lose any time examining where it came or how long it's lasted. 
For such an examination would be in itself a new distraction, more voluntary and injurious than the first. He is satisfied with humbling himself at sight of this infidelity, which holy and voluntary as it is, proves nevertheless that his heart is not wholly fixed upon God. Disquietude, in this case, being a mark of self-love, we must return to God and seek peace and love of our own abjection. Okay, sixth. All right, so I hope that wasn't confusing to you. Sometimes I get to the root. Sometimes people want to keep talking about all of the stuff just because they don't want to just bring it before God and just trust that he's going to heal them and ask him just, you know, we're so used to people not answering that, that we're, it's, it's humbling to go, God, will you just heal this? And it's like, wow, he just took that from me. He took that from me. Um, six, we must follow the same rule in our relations with our neighbor and cause him to feel the truth of these words of our savior. My yoke is sweet and my burden light. Wow. They translated as sweet. Um, no one who takes this yoke upon himself can fail to realize these words for they are the utterance of eternal truth. The practice of which we have just spoken will inevitably cause us to taste its sweetness. Wow, God was just showing this to me yesterday when he was showing me C.S. Lewis saying, you know, hate the sin, absolutely hate when people do injustice, but keep loving the person, you know. Um, Because there's so many people that I just, I just love them and I always want to love them even though they've done me lots of wrongs. You know, that's between them and God. I give, give, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. You give all the debt to God and then God pays you back in the fullness of love and he, they have to answer to God. And, you know, he says, I will bless those who bless you and, and, um, curse those who curse you, hold them accountable and, and hopefully they repent. I pray for all, everyone's repentance, you know, and make things right as quickly as you can. I'm thinking about a certain certain something situation but you know if any kind of situation um um you know it's called making amends as, as best as you can as quickly as you can ask god for guidance on that um um so the practice of this of this of course which we have just spoken will inevitably cause us to taste its sweetness and those around us will taste the sweetness of it because we're not carrying any of this bitterness and they're like how can you not be bitter you know does that mean you just let them let people walk on you it's like no you hold people accountable but you're not bitter about it because you got something better to do is like you know bask in the love of god right don't not you know jesus says if you don't forgive others you won't be forgiven because you're blocking the sunlight with with all of their sins and all their wrongs and it it feels it's like this temporary sense of power because it looks like you're controlling you're not controlling anything except what do they say vengeance is the poison revenge is the poison or unforgiveness bitterness is the poison you're drinking instead of your enemies you know not that you want your enemies to have any of it right you, you want them to be free of it too all right seventh when this feeling of disquiet has passed and peace of mind is restored. It is well then to recall our past faults in order to humble and reprove ourselves. There is no one who ought not feel the need of doing this. So great is the depth of our pride and self-love, which never die and never cease, alas. Wow. So it's not to beat yourself up. It's just, it's just to remember there, what is it? What's the saying? It's like, um, but for the grace of God, there go I. I have you have no idea how you would you would have responded in the circumstances that those people were in. You know, you don't know how you would respond. There you go, little one. You don't know. Look, she's cute. She is. Even her little bag is with hearts. All right, you good girl. Come here. Do you want to sit on my lap? But for you too. Let's get this off your eye. All right. And so, um, you ha you, none of us have any idea. And so ask God for, you know, just, um, like not to beat yourself up with your past, but just to remember, oh, wait, who knows if I would make the same kind of choices or worse than that person's making. 
So anyway, this is just stuff I've learned over the last 20 plus years of being a, a Christian and a psychologist. Uh, and I went to Christian graduate school of psychology. Um, but, you know, just the Holy Spirit can teach you this. It doesn't, you don't have to have a lot of schooling. Don't, don't be intimidated by, look at, um, C.S. Lewis always brings up Bunyan. Is his name John Bunyan? Who wrote The Pilgrim's Progress. He had no education and that book is profound. All right. Okay, so, um, I forgot I want to put her on my lap. Let's see if I can do all that. Oh, okay. So, a uh, when... I, I, okay, anyway, I was like, when you, when you are sleeveless, um, then it's like you get more vitamin D on your arms. You want, they say, I don't know, 40% of your body to have the sunlight on it to get vitamin D. That's what I heard, but I'm, I'm not a medical doctor, so. <laughs> I wish our medical doctors would teach that. <laughs> That's not, I'm just going to leave that because we got to forgive people as well in that respect. Come here, Leah. Um, all right. Okay. Oh, she went down. That's okay. You, you be a dog then. Good girl. Um, so, um, ah, oh, it, it's, it's burning out the marine layer. Okay, so, uh, when the, let's see. So it says, um, not feel the need of doing this. So great is the depth of our pride and self-love, which never die and never cease. Alas, I did watch a video last night of a certain celebrity who was, who was a singer before I was talking about, it was a he, he's talking about just how just when he understood that Jesus loved him right where he was, it just changed everything. It wasn't this act of pretending to be religious. It was accepting that. It was a kind of humility. And he got it. He got it. Maybe I'll post that on my Twitter sometime. Um, on X, you know. If you're on that, my name there is D R C H E R Y L M, Dr. Cheryl M. Anyway, when on the contrary, oh wait, help us. Uh, if we neglect this very important, wait, which never die and cease, uh, and never cease, alas, to tr to produce new fruits. If we neglect, they, that's what they say. They say if you cut off one head of pride, it's like another one can grow until you you learn how to cut off the seven head seven headed dragon. It's um, the Nemean lion. Uh, there's a mythology about that. Anyway, um, anyway, there's different seasons that people go through. God takes different people in different seasons to, to, it's like Hosea says, I will take her out to desert places and woo her back with my love. That just strips everything away from us. So we stop depending on those things to give us worth, right? It's like, if I thought I had to chase love, then I would have definitely rolled my window down for that guy that was parked right next to me with his little camper on the top of his Jeep. <laughs> anyway. Um, when, on the contrary, we persevere... Okay, so if we neglect this very important point, the foundation of our virtues will inevitably lose its solidity. When, on the contrary, we persevere in this habit, we always conceive a greater esteem for our neighbor. Unfavorable appearances no longer lead us to judge rashly, and we only condemn ourselves for recognizing our nothingness and sinfulness. We place ourselves under the feet of all. Wow, right? That means that's in Philippians, or says something like, consider all others greater than yourself, you know? woe is me like the worst of sinners you're not saying that to pretend like to shame yourself it's not shaming yourself it's just like 
you're, you are only aware of your sins before God and other, other people don't see all the inside of you. So it's like, we see that. I know the Orthodox teach that you ought to think of yourself as the worst. That just, it keeps you not judging other people, it keeps you loving them actually. And it's probably the most accurate because you, you have no idea the depth of theirs. It's, it's so, it's so, it's really simple, but it's complicated sometimes to, to express and, exp and describe because it's not about shaming yourself. You ought not to shame yourself. That is pride. It's just, um, anyway, it's just saying, Hey, you know what? I did all these things to you and they were not loving and you're worth so much more love. That's it. You know, that's it. That's all. That's all a girl's looking for. <laughs> like, no kidding. You know what I'm saying, but that's, um, and I want to make amends with God's help, right? That's what all we, all we can say before God. And like, you know, uh, one of these saints or something wrote that there, I think maybe brother Lawrence. Yes. Brother Lawrence in practicing the presence of God. He's just like, I, if you don't help me, there's no way I can get over this God. So I just pray for your help and I'm trusting you to help me, you know, and he does. God does. God does. I know this from my own life. And so, um, in considering our past faults, we must first see how we could have avoided falling. Yes, this is eighth. Okay, we could have, we see how we could have avoided falling. Then with a tranquil heart, lay before Jesus our misery and the will to be faithful to him, which he gives us. Finally, we must not vainly amuse ourselves with estimating the difficulty or the easy, the facility we experience in doing good, right? just don't worry about it either way like oh this is easy like you never know if it's going to be easy or don't imagine that it's going to be a lot more difficult because you just ask god help me and and there's a verse in where is that james i think maybe james one um, god will not tempt you beyond what you can bear and with each temptation he will provide a way out there's always a door or a window out ask god where's the door out of this temptation because I don't want to hurt another person. Like, no more sin. Remember that? In mysticism, studying the nature and development of spiritual consciousness, maybe after video 35 or so, it was like, no more sin. It was after video 30. There's 60 hours of that book by Evelyn Underhill. She inspired C.S. Lewis. And anyway. Okay, so um, we must not go to God circuitously. It's just like around in the back way or something or in circles, but unceasingly rouse our, or quite uh, secretly, but unceasingly rouse ourselves to that pure and generous disinterest, disinterestedness, which will lead us directly to his most loving and adorable majesty. Okay. And so maybe not with a, like a, with, without guile. I think that's what it's talking about. Okay. So this, um, this is in the appendix number two on perfect abandonment by Bosset. Bos, I, I'm not saying the French well, but that's okay. I learned a little bit of French. Oh, pas too français. Um, Bosset. I don't know. Saint Jane Francis de Chantal. I can't wait till we get to Saint Jane. But I don't know who Bosset is. Maybe it was a famous person back in that time. And so, On Perfect Abandonment by Bosset. When we are truly abandoned to God's will, we are ready for all that may come to us. We suppose the worst that can be supposed, and we cast ourselves blindly in the bosom of God, right? In the heart of God. That's so awesome. The Lord is my shepherd. He's my best friend. I lack nothing. I lack nothing. He leads me beside green pastures. He he takes me to quiet waters. And I just learned last week where we're studying the names of God. And last week was the Lord is my shepherd, right? And she was teaching from this book. I think it was Timothy Keller's book on, um, on shepherding because he was a shepherd. I didn't look at the name. I forgot if that guy's name is that. I might be, his last name is Keller. I don't know if it's the same first name, but, but he was saying, that sheep, because your, their wool is so thick, they're afraid of running water because if they get caught in it, it could drown them because it would just bring them down. And so the, the shepherd would have to cut out, you know, a, a rivulet so that the, the spring of water could come and be still waters. All right. There's all these things that as a shepherd does. 
because the sheep are afraid they're skittish right and so it's just like ask god be my shepherd right and go into the heart of god i have still my soul completely like a child at rest on her mother's knees there's a psalm um and john michael talbot sings that to come to the quiet I've stilled my soul completely. I, I've sing I've sing it on YouTube. I think I put it on. It's called "Come to the Quiet." Anyway, um, we forget ourselves. We lose ourselves, and this entire forgetfulness of self is the most perfect penance we can perform. Just forget yourself. I'm just this vessel of love for God. I'm just a. I'm like a flashlight that just holds the batteries and shines the love of God out of me or a candle, you know, just like light me up God and I'll, you know, light up the room because that's just God through us or some Christian mystics, you know, that were Orthodox, whatever. It's still, um, no, I'm not saying Orthodox as the denomination. I'm saying Orthodox as in doxa means glorifying God, but it's like staying in the right, in in the right doctrine um practicing oh doxy is practice i think practicing the right doctrine the the anyway but they said it's like we're like a window and so it's like if you're cut out it's like who your personality is your real essence that god made you the light will shine through you that way but the real love is just god shining through you so there's nothing to to be in in pride over right okay, and i'm gonna let you go on the ground there there okay, so um, when we forget ourselves, we lose ourselves, and this entire forgetfulness of self is the most perfect penance we can perform. For all com conversion consists only in truly renouncing and forgetting ourselves to be occupied with God and filled with Him. This forgetfulness of self is the martyrdom of self-love. It's a kind of living martyrdom, right? Jesus says, take up your cross every day and follow me. Like, just be willing to die to anything that comes in, in between you and God. That's it. Um, is the most perfect. Okay, so. Uh, and to be occupied with God and filled. Wait. Forgetting ourselves and to be occupied with God and filled with him. This forgetfulness of self is the martyrdom of self-love. You, you're dying to self-love. You're just letting it die. You're like. Oh, and when you practice fasting. Um, you know, and you know, you can ask a spiritual director of Christian one. Or, you know, so you're not just fasting for pride's sake, but our church before would fast every Wednesday until 4.30. And so when you get used to just saying no and seeing that you can go a whole day until 4.30 without like going on, you know, social media, let's say, or without food or, or you know, or if you're diabetic without certain kinds of food, you know, or whatever, whatever, you know, depending on, but it's just like, Oh, and then if, if something happens and you don't have food for like three days, you're just not, you're not that worried about it. Or you don't have TV or someone tries to trigger you. You're not that triggered because you're used to going without because you practice once a week going without. And in that time when you practice that, um, and I forget why it was Wednesday. Wednesday was one of the days of the Lord's something. I know Friday is always the day of his crucifixion. So some people fast on Fridays or fast from all meat and except for fish or I don't know but you know when you practice some kind of fast in that time where you're hungry for that thing where you're like I just want to go on social media or whatever you pray you pray for we would pray for um that hearts would truly change that missions would be successful you know all the people that are doing Christian missions all over the world um and that needs would be met you know the widows the orphans anybody who is, is in the service of our king, you know, uh, Lauren Hill sings, adjacent to the king, fear no human being, right? And so we're just praying for their needs to be met. Oh my gosh, I just, I just realized, you know, we have five minutes left or so, and I'm just like, oh, I think I might have to run to get back on time. So like God provide me with the strength to run this trail back and Leia the strength. We'll see. I might just run all the downhill parts because then I'll get there faster, but Anyway, um, a, a lot of it was uphill on the way here, but okay. So, um, this forgetfulness of self is the martyrdom of self-love. Uh-oh. 
I don't know if that's a tick. There's ticks out here. God protect me from all ticks. Ticks. I don't think that. Oh, I think that was just a leaf. Um. All right. So that's the same. Don't don't look ahead. Just trust that God will be with you. I already prayed this morning. Give us this day our daily bread. And my brother taught me. My older brother taught me. That's the super substantial not just the physical bread i need but anything spiritual i need to not get triggered to stay in quiet to stay in peace to stop trying to control things to try to stop trying to get whatever outcome my egotism and flesh might want you know the enemies the world the world programming right the pro satan's matrix the flesh our flesh which just wants what it wants when it wants it and the devil who tries to tempt us through other people through other circumstances through other you know, repetition of childhood patterns and us trying to get our worth from looking for love in all the wrong places, right? We don't need that. Okay, so this is this forgetfulness of self is the martyrdom of self-love. It is it is its death and an annihilation which leaves it without resources. When the heart dilates and it is enlarged, we are relieved by casting from us the dangerous weight of self, which formerly overwhelmed us. Right? It's like, oh, I can just I do what I do right now. We get what we get, we don't throw a fit, and I do What's mine to do in my duty today? What's the mature thing for me to do in my duty today? Like I already had to call an insurance company this morning and get sort all this stuff out. And I got to do the dishes while I was waiting. So other stuff got done while I was just on hold. Like I try to do one thing at a time because I learned that that's a way to, to keep in peace and not as much as I can, like sometimes. Anyway, sometimes I listen to Lord of the Rings while I'm doing a cross, uh, jigsaw puzzle that a thousand piece puzzle i love i love that that's like anyway um we look upon god as a good father who leads us as it were by the hand in the present in the present moment right okay i'm gonna read that other sentence before so super substantial christ is the manna that which came from heaven and manna is what is this what is this bread it fulfills all these needs right Jesus is the I am that shows up for you right now in your right now need, right? And that's what it is when you pray, give us this day our daily bread. Give us today this Jesus that covers everything. This God that provides for us, the uh, absolute infinite beingness. Anyway, we look upon, we, we are relieved by casting from us the dangerous weight of self, which formerly overwhelmed us. We look upon God as a good father who leads us as it were by the hand in the present moment, and all, all our rest is in humble and firm confidence in his fatherly goodness. Psalm 2710, though my father and mother forsake me, the I am that I am, the Lord, capital L-O-R-D, Yahweh, picks me up, right? This, this love that's before all time, beyond all time, picks me up above all these circumstances and loves me, holds me in his arms, right? He's beyond he and she mother and father to us if he replaces them he's both to us he's more than that if anything is capable of making a heart free and unrestrained it is perfect abandonment to god and his holy will this abandonment fills the heart with a divine peace more abundant than the fullest and vastest floods if anything can render a mind serene dissipate the keenest anxieties soften the bitterest pain pains pains multiple pains right sorry Lele. it is assuredly this perfect simplicity and liberty of a heart wholly abandoned to the hands of god the unction of abandonment gives a certain vigor to all the actions and spreads the joy of the holy spirit even over the countenance and words right i'm here today reading to you guys to your women and men and boys and girls right you never know like what i had to face yesterday right I will place all my strength, therefore, in this perfect abandonment to God's hands through Jesus Christ, and he will be my conclusion in all things in virtue of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, that's wonderful. 58, 58. All right, so three is by the same person. So I think I may start it and go back. A short and easy method of making the prayer of faith and of simple presence of God by Boisset. First, we must accustom ourselves to nourish our soul with a simple and loving thought of God and of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And to this end, we must gently separate her, you know, our soul, from all discourse, reasoning, 
and a multitude of affections to keep her in simplicity, respect, and attention, and thus bring her nearer and nearer to God, you know, to the real God, her soul and sovereign good, her first principle and her last end. Okay, that was in the exercises of St. Ignatius. It's called the first principle. That is very similar to that. Okay, so um, I'm folding this really good. Uh, second, the perfection of this life consists in the union with our sovereign good, capital S and capital G. And the greater the simplicity, the more perfect the union. It is for this reason that those who would be perfect are interiorly solicited by grace to become simple, that they may finally be capable of joining the one thing necessary. He was showing me that one thing on the way here. It's like, oh, now I get it. If you are a pearl seeker and you finally find the best pearl in the whole world, you sell everything for that one pearl. And that's this. That's this. That's this relationship with God. Nothing else matters. This is the pearl of great price and your salvation in, in Jesus Christ, your reconciliation with the creator. Um, that is eternal unity. Oh, that's what they say. One thing necessary. That is eternal unity. Then let us frequently say in the depth of our hearts, Oh, unum necessarium unum. Oh, good. They, they translated this. Deus, nus, uh, mus et omnia. Oh, one thing necessary. Thee alone do I wish. Do I seek? Do I desire? Thou art all that I need. Oh, my God and my all. Adjacent to the king and no human being, right? That's Lauren Hill's song. Okay, so um, we'll plan to return there. It's called a prayer of faith and so we'll get to that next video i'm so excited that there's still more for us i was thinking it might end but we've got more letters um maybe two more hours at least all right much love thanks for being here share this if you're inclined that really helps the channel and when you comment anything anything kind or thoughtful or just a verse or whatever you want in any of my videos it helps the algorithm i appreciate it much love